Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of our show. I'm your host of the most, Mr. Muhammad, Mr. M, Mr. Mo. Call me what you want, call me what you need. Now it seems like a lot of people are loving that intro in school and I appreciate all the support that we are getting and the show is getting. Now this episode is all about World Autism Day and the inclusivity and diversity that we have and we should have, of course. And in our school, I couldn't find anyone better than Miss Amo to speak about the special educational needs that some of our students have. Now, please, perhaps you could tell us a bit about yourself, Miss Amo. Hello, my name is Miss Amo. Thank you for having me on the show. Um, I am a special trained special needs teacher and I've been working in the field for over 10 years so I've worked with diverse um, disabilities yeah up to this point so at BISC um, basically the focal point for inclusive education now it's really exciting to have you on the show here with us because I'm sure you have a lot of experiences that you can share, share with us and a lot of insights that you can also not just introduce to us but also the rest of the listeners and people watching us at home? Um, what I can say is that people who are differently abled, they are just like any other person. They have, they want to be loved. They mm -hmm. have love to give to other people. They have humor. They respect us. They want to be respected. Like they're just of like course. any other person. So, um, what I can say is that as people who haven't been diagnosed, because everybody is different in one area or the other, so we should try our best to try and show them respect and um, include them in everything in the community as at large. Of course, of course, because we cannot forget that they are humans. They are like part of the population. We have to include them in our, let's say, our day-to-day -day activities, and especially in education, of course. That's their right, isn't it? It is, according to the UN Conventions of a Child. Yes, everybody has a right to quality education. Of course, and since we say everybody, we mean everybody. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> now, of course, um, what can you tell us about, let's say, the challenges you faced with, the, let's say, teaching special education needs students? Um, the challenges, uh, basically for me as an educator, I could say paperwork. Mm. There is a lot <laughs> of paperwork in this department because we do a lot of recording, we do a lot of assessments, we do a lot of planning, so there's a lot of paperwork. Of course, yeah. I can say that this is the bane of almost every teacher. Some of our friends ask me, like, Hamad, what's the boring part of teaching? And I immediately tell them exactly what you said, the paperwork. paperwork. Yes, yes. <laughs> paperwork is a major challenge. So if you guys think you have a lot of paperwork, come to the SC and then you'll know what paperwork looks like. It's, it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> we might pay you a visit. Of course, please do. <laughs> now, of course, speaking of paperwork, um, I can make the assumption that you guys have, let's say, individualized uh, educational plans. Yes, um, an individualized educational plan is a plan that we, it's, it's an annual plan, right? Mm -hmm. However, we split it into terms, for example. Uh, yeah. We will have a plan for each term, right? At the beginning of term, we will set goals. Mm -hmm. And then mid-term, we review them. At the end of the term, we're going to review again. Mm. So in one term, we sit three times to review, yeah. yeah. Once and to set the goals. Yes. And once to review them and once to assess them. Yes. Can say. Like in the middle, we are checking whether this plan, this intervention plan is working or not. If mm. it's not working, we have to change because we don't want to uh, keep a plan that is not working for the whole time. Of right? course. Yes. That's the, why the, we there's have to. No, there's no point in practicing something that, uh, let's say, doesn't work. You know, if you do the same thing over and over and expect different results, what's the definition of that? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's what happens. So in an IEP, um, we set goals that are measurable, 
right? Mm -hmm. And the goals are set according to an individual's abilities, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So two students in one class will have two different IEPs, right? Yes. So um, because we want to nurture our, stud our students wholeheartedly, we ensure that an IEP focuses on the academic aspect, mm -hmm. uh, social, emotional, and um, communication uh, aspects. Of course. Yeah. Because again, this is not trying to make them indep independent, but this is to include them in, let's say, the community that they are in, isn't it? Yes, we are equipping them with skills for life because if uh, somebody cannot manage their emotions, it's going to be very hard for them to survive in a community, right? Mm. If they cannot express their uh, feelings or they cannot express what they need to say, it's going to be very hard for them to be included, right? Of course, it's yeah. almost sounding like uh, a non-verbal form of communication that needs to be developed for the for the SEN like yes. students, let's say, yes. or persons. Yes, we want them to have a voice mm. like everybody else does. Of course. Now, perhaps we can take a step away from the individualized experiences and you can share some insights about the holistic view of, let's say, let's say autism. Um, autism is is a neurological disorder mm -hmm. and usually it affects communication aspect, it affects um, social skills, and to some extent, it affects the intellectual abilities of an individual. Yes. So autism as it is, it is called a spectrum, mm -hmm. which means that it affects people differently. So two people can never be on the same level of the spectrum. So, for example, you have that at one end of the continent, you have an individual who is very high functioning, yet they are still on the spectrum. Mm. And at the other end of the continent, you have somebody who is severely affected by autism. So, uh, people on the spectrum, they are literally on different points. Yeah. So, it means that they have different strengths and weaknesses. However, mm. we try to help each and every one of them to become the best version of themselves that they can be. Of course, of course. And perhaps you can also share some insight about the difference between a person being on the high functioning end of the spectrum and the other end of the spectrum. Okay, somebody who is sub, who's called high functioning, uh, in other cases, they can go all, all the way throughout their life Mm -hmm. without even being diagnosed, right? So it means um, intellectually, they are very capable. Um, social skills, they can socialize. Um, communication, they communicate perfectly, right? Mm. Yeah, and they do not have sensitivities or behavioral issues that are obvious to the world, right? Yeah. Yeah. And at the other end of the spectrum, you have an individual who has the, the, the sensitivities are very, high, how do I put it? They have behavioral challenges, like severe behavioral challenges. Mm. You find that those individuals sometimes are nonverbal um, and the intellectual abilities are very low. Yes. So that's the other end of the spectrum. Mm. Now, bringing it back to more, let's say, individualized experiences from your perspective, um, how have you, or what method is there that helps you, let's say, improve a person's communication ability if they were nonverbal? Um, if a person, if a student is nonverbal, um, we use um, interventions like PECS system, which literally translates to picture exchange system. Mm. So PECS, the non, picture yes, exchange PECS, picture exchange system. system. Yes. So the nonverbal individual will have the, the cards with them so that they can hand them out mm -hmm. to express what is it that they need. So why do we need this? To eliminate the frustration that come with not being able to express themselves. Mm. It, it, the cards give Give them a voice. Of course. Mm -hmm. It's essentially like a, a deck of cards that has their needs. Exactly. Let's say. For example, I can I can make the assumption that 
let's say a card has a glass of water, it means that they are thirsty. Yes. W- if, would it be so? Yes. If they hand you that, it means they need some water. Mm. Mm-hmm. And what are some other examples? What if, let's say, they have something that they uh, don't, or they need something that they don't have the card for? Um, basically, as a special needs teacher, like a parent, you have to be ahead of mm. your child, right? Of course. So <clears throat> when we design the cards, we design them around the the majority of the needs that they are likely to to request, mm. right? Yes. Mm. That's how we eliminate them needing something that's not on the board. But also, uh, there are some cases whereby um, they need something that's not there, but that doesn't happen frequently. It's it's mm. it's quite rare. It's like a rare instance where yes. an SEN person would want something that, let's say, out of the ordinary. Because that's what's sounding to me. Yes, but it's it's... It's a normal occurrence because even for somebody, for a child who is verbal, Mm -hmm. sometimes they could want something like they could cry for no reason. And the other person doesn't really know how to meet that need because they really are not communicating what is it that they want. Mm. Yes. And also, uh, we have to consider that the people who are usually using the PEGS system, they have other very complex needs. Mm. Such as? So sometimes uh, sensitivity, they could be sensitive to sound, to light, to smell. I could mm-hmm. be wearing a perfume which they find very strong and that's going to trigger them. Oh. Or I could come wearing something or a guest could walk through the door and then they are wearing a color they cannot stand or they say something. So those individuals, like they have a lot of triggers. Of course. Yes. So a person needs to be aware of let's say someone who has sensitivity issues so that they in case they wouldn't uh, trigger let's say the episode is that what you call it <laughs> yeah sometimes we are we try to be steps ahead but it cannot always be possible to be steps ahead right mm. because you cannot really monitor what a guest is going to come wearing, right? Of course. Or a perfume that somebody is going to come wearing, right? Yeah, you can only predict so far. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. Now, I would also like to mention, let's say, our experiences as teachers in the school. Uh, how has technology helped us, let's say, with the, the special educational needs students that we have? We live in the 21st century and technology is at the center of education. So here at BISC, we have interactive smart boards in every classroom. So... Um, these smart boards um, quite benefit everybody, including students who are getting special education support. Of course. So we use them to provide uh, multi-sensory lessons. For example, we could have um, a, a video playing to explain certain aspects of a lesson. Of course, right? or an audio book playing, let's Thank say. Thank you. We could have an audio book playing or we could have games that uh, foster hand-eye coordination games that um, improve uh, memory. The list is endless. Of course. Now, when you said we are surrounded by technology and it has become the center of education, it just made me think about like what I'm using right now to also manage my lessons and everything. Exactly. And again, to, let's say, segue us into our last bit for today's episode, let's say how us as teachers and educators how we explore ways that we can include all of the things that we have mentioned before in our school and in our classes so one way one way that i would like to say think about or use to include uh, special education needs is to present differentiated learning uh, what experiences can you share with us about that miss Okay, before we get to that, uh, one important aspect that we should have as an inclusive school is that we should have empathy because people on the spectrum, on a Monday, they could have a perfect day. And then on a Thursday, 
they could have a different day altogether. So mm. we should believe in them. We should give them a chance. We should not judge them on one episode of them having a difficult day. Of right? course. So empathy is at the center of inclusivity, right? So coming to uh, inclusive practices in the classroom, uh, first of all, uh, we need to plan our lessons uh, basing uh, we need to base lesson planning on the students themselves. So uh, as a teacher, as an educator, your lesson planning should be driven by students, not by you. So the lessons should be student-centered. Of right? course, to, yeah. to make it more inclusive, let's say, and to bring it back home as well, to develop empathy, you need to also foster acceptance in, let's say, and not just our students, but rather everyone who's listening, uh, whether at home or all over the globe. After all, they are a part of the population yes. and we have to include them. We have to be empathetic and understanding towards them. Yes. So a lesson should uh, be delivered via multi-sensory platforms. For example, you could have pictures, you could have an audio, you could have like the same content in writing so that every other person can access the, the content according to their learning style, right? Also, when you assess them, try to use different assessments method. Don't mm. just focus on one aspect of, of assessment. Try to have different aspects of assessment. Yeah, that mm. way you are very inclusive of everybody. Of because, course. Because uh, people who are getting special needs support, they learn differently. Even the other people who are not specifically called uh, students with who are getting special needs support, they still learn differently, right? Mm. So in other way, you are um, including everybody's learning style, not just the students who have been on the list of the ones who need special needs support. Now, of course, to bring it back to, let's say, empathy, fostering acceptance, understanding and collaboration, there has to be some challenges that people with autism face as well. Could you perhaps elaborate on that as well? Um, thank you. A major challenge is mostly social isolation. Mm. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the interview, that autism affects uh, communication and social skills aspects of an individual. So this pe this individuals struggle with initiating conversation. They struggle with initiating friendship. So it's always um, we advise that in a school we coach our students to try and uh, initiate friendship, to try and initiate conversations. We are not forcing, but we are asking that they meet them halfway because. They cannot like initiate. Of course, yes. they they lack the ability to initiate. Yes. So it falls it falls to us to try and collaborate and help and foster acceptance among not just the SEN department but everyone else as well because it's all about inclusivity and diversity now, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Empathy. Empathy mm -hmm. as well, of yes. course. It's like yes. a key word that mm -hmm. we can discuss in a later episode. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, as much as we would love to continue the conversation, unfortunately, we have reached the end of the episode. And I would like to thank Ms. Amo for being a wonderful guest with us here today. Now, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and share, and comment. And we have been proud.